Buju, Nesco, our ten any, and this Nicas, Wabski, my ingan, and do them, Nanning, the midday, Kinebic, Minis, and Dunji. Uh, Akaway, first, I want to uh, talk a little bit about the story. Uh, long ago, uh, I had a friend named Murdo Scribe, he was from Norway House, and he asked me, um, What did we call the Big Dipper before we had dippers? And uh, I didn't know the answer. And I looked all over asking elders about that. And finally, I met a couple, the late uh, Johnston Blacksmith, and late Mary North. They lived at uh, Cross Lake, Manitoba. Uh, I took them tobacco and asked, and they said uh, they would tell me that uh, to come back in four days and they, they would uh, tell this legend. And so I went back taking, uh, again, tobacco and food. So we had a little feast. We feasted this uh, this legend. And then uh, they told the story about this ojig, this fisher, and uh, how the fisher brought summer back and uh, how the seasons became the way they are today. But this, this was... Uh, a story, a Cree story, and I was really happy to hear it. And I kept phoning Murdo and uh, wanting to tell him that I found this story for him. And then when I finally talked to him, he said, uh, oh, he said, I knew that story a long time ago. I just wanted you to know. <laughs> so he didn't tell me. He got me to search for it. And I think that's the way a lot of our people uh, taught. They made you seek out the answers. But uh, I wondered about the Ojibwe story. That was the Cree story. And they, sh they should be very similar. Uh, so thanks to uh, late Leonard Moose, uh, his wife Mary Moose, their children, uh, uh, Joe Sutherland and Abe Sutherland, I heard this story. And so I want to share it with uh, uh, young people in the division if we, we can. But this story says that... Uh, a long time ago, the Anishinaabe were not living on the good road of life. They were not following their clan teachings nor conducting their ceremonies. They were walking a bad road of life at that time. And they say that there was an old spirit who watched over Anishinaabe. He observed them for a long time. That spirit was called Gabab Bunakit, the winter spirit. Some call him the winter maker. And he's one of the oldest spirits that uh, are found here upon Mother Earth. Gababa Bunakit decided to freeze over all of Turtle Island. And he was doing this because the people weren't living right. And today, this time the, where he froze uh, Turtle Island, they call that the Ice Age. And so what he did was... Uh, he took like this, and he blew his uh, sacred breath, this cold, cold breath. And he blew this all over Turtle Island. And at that time, uh, as he blew his breath, the, all the birds were caught up in the, the breath of that winter maker. And they were carried into the star world to Gababa Bunakate's lodge his wigwam that's up there in the star world. And what happened at that time, it was like uh, all of these little medicine bags uh, enveloped those little birds. And so they were all hanging on those um, lines in uh, Gababunakit's lodge. And at that time, uh, it was understood that the birds, when they came and sang, they're the ones that brought the springtime, they brought the summer, they brought all this life in that. When they sang, this life just came out all over. Uh, greenness spread from the earth. There's, there's a longer story about this, but this is how I uh, remember hearing this, in that uh, these birds cause the seasons to happen. And, uh, Every time when these birds come back, they bring this new life, and then when they leave, that's when the, the winter comes back. But during that time, all the birds were trapped in Gababunakit's lodge, 
in his wigwam, so it became very, very cold, and that cold never left at that time. So it stayed that way for years, and it was uh, many, many, many years. And many of our people, the Anishinaabek, they didn't survive at that time. Most perished, and only a few were able to survive in those harsh conditions of the, of the Ice Age. But even though the winter stayed for a very long time, there were some animals that still remembered the seasons. And I want you to think about this, that uh, our people call the, the animal world uh, our elders, because they're, they were here before us, and they have lots of knowledge about the earth. And so our people understood and respected and honored that, and so they call them our, our elders. Uh, but during that time, these animals remembered the other seasons, and they told stories about how beautiful it was when there were many different flowers, when water flowed, uh, when rain fell from the sky, rainbows were visible, birds were everywhere singing, and they talked about how the scenery changed during the seasons and how all of those seasons had their own beauty. And so all these animals made a decision one day and they were going to find a way to bring back the warm weather. And so four of them, uh, first was uh, Ojig, the fisher, Gog, the porcupine, Nigik, the otter, and Bishu, the lynx. These were the ones that decided that they were going to bring back the, the summer. And so they recalled the teachings of their elders. And they recalled being told about Gabibunakit's lodge in the sky, in the star world. And they, said, they had told them that if they could climb to the highest peak on Turtle Island and climb the highest tree on that peak, they should be able to see that lodge. And so these four beings set out to do that. And once they had climbed that highest peak, and then they found the tallest pine tree they had ever seen, and they climbed that tree, and they noticed a faint outline of a lodge up above them in the star world. And they agreed that if they could jump hard enough and high enough, that they would be able to make it to that lodge. And so the first one who tried that was Gog, the porcupine. And back then, in that time, he was very, very swift. He was very agile. And he had uh, very strong and big legs. He, he looked different than he does today. And uh, so he got a good uh, run. He ran on that tree, and he ran out on the longest branch, and then he jumped as hard as he could. And he went a long ways up, but when uh, he, he reached this one point in the sky world, something stopped him. He hit this barrier, and he come crashing back down to the earth. And when he hit the ground, uh, he broke his legs, and his body flattened out and became heavier. And that's why that uh, Gog looks like that today. He's got short legs, and he waddles when he walks. Uh, the other thing about uh, about that Gog is that uh, today, if you see them, you, you might see this in the springtime, and they, they climb way up the trees, and they, they chew on the, those little twigs way up there, but they'll jump down to the ground just the way that uh, that one fell from that, uh, that star world. And so they reenact this story if you watch, watch them out there in nature. So this one tried, but he didn't make it. And so the next one that tried to reach the lodge was Nigik, the otter. And so Nigik says, I could do this. I, I could get to that lodge. I could break through that barrier that you hit. He says, Gog wasn't strong enough, but I'm stronger. And so he ran as fast as he could, and he jumped as high as he could. And he too hit that barrier, and he too went crashing back down to the earth. 
when uh, he came down, he landed on that on that mountain, and then he slid down that that mountain on on his belly. And today, when you look at otters, they have a white streak on their belly, and that's where that uh, that otter slid. And today, when you see them playing, they love to slide uh, on the little snow hills or snow drifts. It's just like they, they play on there, sliding down, and they're re reenacting this story also. And then now there was two left, and uh, that Bishu, the lynx, he said, I'll give it a try. I'm the mightiest of all of us, and I'll break through that barrier, and I'll see what's going on in that lodge up there. So he too, he ran and he jumped, and when he hit that barrier, he came crashing back down onto that tree. But he wouldn't give up. He tried this over and over. And then finally he told Ojig, he said, I don't think we're going to make it up there. That barrier is really strong, and it keeps us from going up into that star world. And Ojig looked closely at that lodge, and he said, Bishu, I think you made a crack in that barrier. Look. And Bishu looked and he said, I bet you could fit through there. You're small enough. If I help you, it could work. Before making his attempt, Ujig decided that he was making an offering and asking permission to go through this doorway to the star world. So then Bishu aided Ojig, he gave him a boost through that crack in that barrier, and he was able to go through this place, they call it Bhaganegizhik, it's called the hole in the sky, and when you look at it today, it's a circle of seven stars that in English they call the Pleiades, but we call it Bhaganegizhik. So Ojig was small enough to fit through that crack, and he found himself in the sky world, he saw a great lodge there, and at either side of the doorway there were these huge birds that we call herons. These were the lookouts, and they, they would give a big loud call if anybody came close. But Ojig was really smart, and he decided how, how to do this, so he snuck up behind the herons. And what he did was he took some of the fur from his back and he stuck it down these herons' throats. And so when they tried to make a call, they wouldn't be able to call very loud. And if you hear these herons today, it sounds like uh, they have fur stuck in their throat. <laughs> That's because of what Ojig did to them. So Ojig made it into that lodge, and then when he got inside there, he was just shocked, because tied to the ribs of the lodge were hundreds and hundreds of bags, and these bags were moving because there were birds inside of them. So Ojig went around and he untied these bags, but he also saw sitting in the lodge the spirit that was Gababibunakit, and he said, I better be careful. If he sees me, uh, then that's the end. And so Ojig snuck around in that lodge on all four levels of that lodge, freeing all of those birds from where they were. And he whispered them, to them to wait until all of them were free, and then the, they would leave together. And so they all left that lodge, and he led them to that uh, hole in the sky, and they were able to come down, escaping back to the earth. But Gababa Bunakit had noticed that these birds were all leaving the lodge, and he wondered who did this, he was going to get them. And so when he looked, he saw Ojig leading these birds. And now he knew he was going to get them. And so what he did, he took out uh, one of his arrows, and then he took that arrow and he blew on the tip of that arrow with, with his cold, cold breath. And then he shot that arrow and he hit Ojig. He hit him in the tail. And what happened was that uh, Ojig fell, and he didn't survive this, this fall, and that arrow was stuck in his tail. But the ones that, uh, who guard that 
that doorway called Bhaganegi Shikti Sadas. And they went and they told the uh, Kababa Bunikit, he said, they said, uh, maybe give Anishinaabek another chance. He said, they, they want some warm weather down there. Maybe let them try experience that good weather. Maybe they'll go back to their good road again. And so he allowed them to try once more. And so these uh, birds brought this warmth back. But Gababa Bunikit said, once a year I'm going to come back and rule all of Turtle Island again. And so when these birds go south in the fall, then uh, Bibun returns. That's the winter. And you know that uh, when the birds come back in the spring and you hear their birds, these bird songs again, you know that it's not just sound, but it's something that causes the seasons to change. And because uh, Ojig had given its life to uh, free these birds and bring the seasons back, he was uh, placed up among the stars. And if you look at uh, look at the, the way that it's shaped, uh, where his tail is, that's what you call the handle of that dipper. On that one star, there's actually two stars there, and one is uh, blue color. And it's because it's cold from the breath of Gabab Ibunikit. And so that's right in the bend of the tail where that arrow is sticking. And so this is how... Uh, this winter uh, that was everlasting was overcome by the animals and the birds brought the spring and summer back to Turtle Island again. Uh, we're getting close to this time, what's going to be uh, called the, the uh, shortest day. And uh, this time, it's like uh, the winter is going to really set in because it, it comes after the shortest day. Uh, every, everything is after that. And um, we're going to have this shortest day, and then there's a, a few days there. They're not actually going to get longer. And then on that fourth day, you're going to know that it's a, it's a longer day, that uh, springtime is going to come. And so people would make a feast there at that time, eh? And uh, it wasn't hard for our people to uh, continue that feasting, just call it Christmas dinner. <laughs> so our people continue to do these things, but we shouldn't forget our stories and where they all come from. So miigwech everyone for listening and allowing me to share this story with you. And miigwech to those who taught the story to me.